The Legend of the Gobble Walker is the second episode of Gravity Falls, but actually is the first produced and written. In it, Stan wants to bond with the kids, but they ditch him to go discover the Gobble Walker. Shenanigans ensue. The episode begins with Dipper and Mabel having a syrup race, which kind of reminds me of the scene from Super Troopers, even though it's different. We get a reference to just last episode, where Mabel still has some beard hair from the gnomes. Mabel outfit check, we have this purple sweater with a heart on it wearing sunglasses, and this rusty orange one when she was counterfeiting for Stan. Stan wants to go fishing with the kids. There we meet a bunch of the side characters we'll see throughout the rest of the series, like Lazy Susan, played by Jennifer Coolidge, Toby Determined, the reporter, Manly Dan and his kids, played by Jake from Adventure Time, Tyler Q. Biker, the guy who goes, Get him, get him! Sheriff Bubs, played by Kevin Michael Richardson, and Pretty Duralyn, and most importantly for the episode, Old Man McGucket. Originally named Crazy Larry, but Disney didn't like the character being called crazy, so they changed it to Old Man McGuffin. A McGuffin is a plot device that gets the story going, which McGucket does in fact do as he says he sees the Gobble Walker. Hey, who's that guy? Everyone thinks he's just a crazy old prospector, except for Dipper and Mabel who want to discover it. Stan's boat is called the Stan of War. The twins decide to ditch Stan to go with Zeus to get a contest to take a picture of the Gobble Walker. Mabel would want to use the prize money to buy a giant hamster ball. This is the first appearance of her very 80s cool vaporwave dream boys, who are characters much like McGucket you wouldn't expect to be reoccurring, but they are. And Dipper wants to become a famous adventurer. He is dressed like Indiana Jones. And on this photo, we can see that Stan has a weird symbol on his back. Huh. And I like that the two daydreams cross over. Showing how old this show is, because they don't have phones, they're going to use disposable cameras. Back in ye olde times, before everyone had an HD camera in their pocket, this is how you took photos of stuff. A little plastic box that you take photos of, and then you have to get the film developed, because it'll just go black if you expose it to light. When Mabel puppets the pelican, it is not Kristen Shaw voicing, it is Alex Hirsch's temp audio. They made the butt island to look for the everlasting gobstopper. They think they find it, but it turns out it's just a bunch of driftwood. If you haven't got the reference yet, the Gobble Walker is clearly a reference to Loch Ness Monster. Probably one of the most famous urban legend monsters, and of course this iconic photo that you have seen before has been discredited as driftwood. Also, big animation mistake throughout the episode, they forgot to add the question mark to Zeus's shirt. At the end of the episode, it turns out the Gobble Walker was actually just a giant robot being piloted by Old Man McGucket. This is probably an unintentional reference to Scooby-Doo and the Loch Ness Monster. That film was scary as a kid, yo. And just like the Loch Ness Monster film, it had a robotic monster. And it turns out that there is a real monster at the end. And the reason why McGucket did it is so he can get the attention of his son. Which gets the twins thinking and goes back to Stan. It also turns out that he has an ankle bracelet. The code at the end is, next week, return to Bud Island. We in fact, never return to Scuttlebutt Island. But in the commentary for the episode, they do reveal that there were some ideas originally of returning to the island, but they just never really did. This episode is kind of famous because... Someone made this edit to add Slenderman in the background. He is not actually there in the real episode. Weird enough, the photo without the red circle around it was lost for 10 years. For those who don't know or don't remember or too young to watch my channel, Slenderman is the face, or lack thereof, of the internet horror story scene known as Creepypastas. This episode came out at the zenith of the popularity of Creepypastas in the early 2010s where people mostly just used these stories to have their cute emo boy OC. Unlike today where Creepypasta is mostly just adding more and more to the back room. And yes, I was a Creepypasta kid. I first heard about the Slenderman hoax back in the day and that's the thing that drove me to watch Gravity Falls. Even after I found out it was bogus, I'm glad I stuck around in the long term. Either way, this episode is alright. It's good in the long term to introduce McGucket and the background characters and show McGucket as being good with technology for later. I like that Grunkle Stan just wanted fishing friends. Of course the episode's hilarious. Rule of thumb, every episode of Gravity Falls is hilarious. But the Gobba Topper being fake just seems wrong for Gravity Falls. And it's not one of the episodes I think of when I think of Gravity Falls. I still liked it, but it's just kind of a 5.5 out of 10.
Uncle Stan, are you wearing a blindfold? <laughs> nah, but with these cataracts, I might as well be. What is that, a woodpecker? Ah!